Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. The case of Anna Walsh, a horrific event in the basement of a family home. For over a year now, an investigation has been ongoing into the mysterious disappearance of a young woman and mother of three children, Anna Walsh. In January of the previous year, the case was reclassified as a brutal crime, although the body of the missing 39-year-old American woman of Serbian descent has yet to be found to this day. Her husband, Brian Walsh, who had previously encountered legal issues for fraud, was arrested on charges related to her disappearance. No one could have imagined that this individual could be responsible for ending the life of the mother of his sons. It's noteworthy that the Walsh family appeared to be quite prosperous, successful, and happy on the surface. Moreover, the couple was not in want, living in a luxurious home, and could afford anything they desired. However, few were aware of what happened behind the closed doors of this large and beautiful house. Even the person closest to Anna, her mother, did not realize the deadly danger her daughter was in. Interestingly, Brian managed to woo Anna away from her previous husband years ago in a rather unique manner. So unique, in fact, that the woman and her first husband even sought police protection from harassment and threats. Nevertheless, she eventually left with Walsh, to whom she was married for over seven years. But what happened that led the family head to decide to rid himself of his wife? And what did he do to her? Who was Anna Walsh? Anna Lubacic, who later became known as Anna O'Neill following her first marriage, was born on April 18, 1983, in the Serbian capital of Belgrade. Here, she spent her formative years, growing up with her younger sister in a cultured family. Her academic journey led her to the 5th Belgrade Gymnasium, where she excelled as one of its standout students. Pursuing higher education, Anna attended the esteemed Belgrade Research University, the most historic and expansive university in Serbia. Her academic pursuits included a deep dive into foreign languages, culminating in a master's degree in French language and literature. At 22, with her diploma in hand, Anna sought broader horizons and career prospects in the United States, a move fully supported by her family. In 2005, she embarked on her American dream. Settling in the U.S., Anna aimed to further her education in hospitality management. She took on administrative roles at prestigious hotels, notably the Inn at Little Washington in Virginia, a part of the elite Relay and Chateau Hotel Circle. Anna's warmth, approachability, and sense of duty saw her swiftly ascend the professional ladder, garnering respect from her peers and supervisors alike. Multilingual and adept at resolving conflict, her innate charm and charisma allowed her to form connections with ease. Beloved by colleagues and blessed with a burgeoning circle of friends, Anna seized every chance to shine. She became a U.S. citizen, retaining her Serbian nationality, enjoyed a high income, and invested in her own property and car. Her travels broadened her horizons further, and her career flourished leading to a promotion to senior manager. Anna's intelligence, beauty, slender frame, and radiant smile attracted many admirers. During her tenure at the Wheatley Hotel in Lenox, Massachusetts, she found love with Marcus O'Neill, the establishment's head chef. Their romance led to marriage in 2009, and Anna adopted her husband's last name. Who is Brian Walsh? Brian Paul Walsh was born in July 1975 in Boston, Massachusetts, into a well-known, affluent, and respected family. His father, Thomas Walsh, was a distinguished neurologist who worked at one of the state's leading hospitals, where he headed a department and also taught at a prestigious medical university. From a young age, Brian was the quintessential spoiled child, luxuriating in wealth and never knowing the word no. He attended one of the best private schools, wore expensive branded clothing, and lived a life of ease. Despite his parents' efforts to provide him with the best education, after finishing school, he failed to stay enrolled in any of the three prestigious colleges his father had arranged for him to attend. Nevertheless, Brian was far from foolish. His peers remembered him 
as cunning, calculating, and quite aggressive. He always found a way to get what he wanted one way or another. Brian was known for his extraordinary, even obsessive desire for money and a luxurious lifestyle, and he was extremely reluctant to part with his funds. In his youth, he often borrowed money from friends, only to never return it. During his college years, he would invite friends to the most luxurious restaurants, then through various schemes and manipulations, ensure that others always paid his share of the bill. For many years, Brian was estranged from his father, up until the elder Walsh's death in 2018. The rift in their relationship began after the ungrateful son fraudulently withdrew nearly a million dollars from Dr. Thomas Walsh's personal account and simply disappeared with the money. The father did not report his son to the police and even tried to persuade him to return the money voluntarily. When Brian refused, Thomas ceased all communication with him. By the time of this egregious theft incident, Brian's parents had long been divorced, and his father had another family, and decided to permanently erase his eldest heir from his life and his will. However, when Thomas passed away, Brian immediately made his presence known and even filed a lawsuit, claiming that the will left behind was forged by the doctor's widow and younger children to cheat him out of his rightful inheritance. Naturally, he was unable to prove anything or receive any part of the estate. Moreover, those who knew Brian described him as greedy, malevolent, and quite cruel, with a tendency towards violence and an inability to control his emotions. He achieved everything by force and during bouts of anger became dangerous. According to some reports, in the late 2000s, Walsh underwent treatment in a psychiatric clinic where he attempted to curb his bursts of rage, and it was then that he was officially diagnosed with sociopathy. A truly peculiar love story. The future spouses met in 2014, a time when Anna was working as a senior reservation manager at the Wheatley Hotel in Massachusetts. At that moment, she was married to Marcus O'Neill, who was employed there as well. Brian was among the hotel's guests, and he was immediately taken by the attractive young woman. The fact that Anna was already married did not deter Walsh in the slightest. He began to show her attention that grew increasingly insistent. Accustomed to getting his way from a young age and not one to accept refusal, he began to pursue Anna relentlessly. He managed to obtain her phone number and even her home address, where she lived with her husband, turning their lives into an absolute nightmare. In 2015, the O'Neills found themselves compelled to ask the police for protection against Brian's incessant harassment, which persisted day and night. He constantly sought out Anna, called her at work, sent messages to her personal phone, and demanded she divorce her husband to be with him. The situation escalated when Walsh threatened to harm Anna and her husband if she did not leave with him. What happened next remains unclear, including why Anna eventually changed her mind. However, a year after seeking police protection from Walsh, she unexpectedly divorced her husband. Moreover, a few months later, Brian became her second officially wedded husband. The newlyweds settled in a luxurious home in Cohasset, Massachusetts, located about 20 miles southeast of Boston, in an upscale and well-appointed neighborhood. In this marriage, they welcomed three sons in quick succession. The boys were born a couple of years apart, and at the time of their mother's disappearance, they were six, four, and two years old. Anna did not consider taking maternity leave and successfully juggled work with motherhood, continuing her upward career trajectory. She assumed the position of regional general manager at Tishman Spire, a real estate company, where she earned a high salary and effectively became the primary breadwinner for the family. As her job frequently took her to Washington, D.C., she also purchased another home there, registered in her name, where she stayed during business trips. During these times, she relied on visiting nannies to help care for her children. The Fraud Case Against Brian Walsh What was the head of this large family doing while his wife was both expanding their family and building her career? Brian was unemployed. The million dollars he had once taken from his father was dwindling, and everything his wife acquired was wisely registered in her name. 
Brian was actively seeking effortless income sources. Before marrying Anna, Brian had spent some time in South Korea, where he befriended a very wealthy individual whose family owned an impressive art collection. Upon returning to the United States, Walsh maintained this connection, and his friend unexpectedly asked for his help in selling several paintings by the iconic artist Andy Warhol. Brian eagerly agreed, but decided not just to sell the artworks for a commission, but to truly profit from the transaction. He had access to a series of abstract paintings by the great artist, collectively titled Shadows. He appraised each painting, obtained the necessary documentation, including authenticity certificates, and then decided to create copies of both the images and the accompanying documents. Walsh approached artists who made precise replicas of the paintings. He convinced the artists that he needed these copies as a backup, since each of the original works was worth about a quarter of a million dollars. For several years, the fraudster successfully copied and sold fake paintings as originals to collectors from various countries, until one of his buyers, an art expert specializing in Andy Warhol's work, quickly identified a forgery and sued the fraudster. The FBI took on the investigation, and in April 2021, the suspect pleaded guilty to selling counterfeit art. He was placed under house arrest after his lawyer negotiated a deal, requiring him to return the proceeds from the sale of the paintings to the buyers to avoid actual prison time. Brian's movements were significantly restricted, but he was allowed to leave his house. Twice a day, he could drive his children to and from their educational institutions. Additionally, he had two and a half hours in the morning to visit stores, pharmacies, dry cleaners, and a few other places in his area to purchase necessities. The list of these places was limited and approved in an official document. The Mysterious Disappearance of Mrs. Walsh On December 31st, 2022, the Walsh family was preparing to ring in the new year together in the comfort of their home. Present were just the spouses and their three sons. Due to their young ages, the boys went to bed early, leaving Anna and Brian at the dinner table. That day, Anna made her last post on social media, extending her greetings and noting ambiguously that the year had been challenging. But she and her husband remained united. Anna was scheduled to fly to Washington, D.C. for work on January 3rd. But on January 4th, her employer, Tishman Spire, reported her missing to the police. She had failed to show up for work, missed closing a crucial deal, and her phone had been unreachable for several days. Independently of Spire's actions, her husband also reported her missing, expressing his concern that he had been unable to contact her for several days. According to Brian, he last saw Anna on January 1st. He claimed she woke him up early in the morning saying that there were some issues at work and her boss had requested her to come in earlier than planned. After that, Mr. Walsh believed his wife headed to the airport with just a few belongings. However, inconsistencies in the case soon emerged. Firstly, Anna hadn't purchased, changed, or reserved a flight ticket for January 1st, nor had she canceled her flight scheduled for January 3rd. Secondly, she didn't appear at the airport on either January 1st or 3rd. Thirdly, how did she leave the house? Her personal car was still in the garage, and she hadn't called for a taxi. Brian suggested she might have hitchhiked, but this theory sounded far from convincing. Brian's statements and behavior raised many questions. His accounts were inconsistent, and he didn't seem particularly troubled by the unfolding events. Unable to contact the mother of his children for more than three days, he only reported her missing on the fourth day and only after her workplace called. Investigation and arrest of the suspect. From the outset, Mr. Walsh was considered a primary suspect, yet law enforcement lacked sufficient grounds for his arrest or a warrant to search their family home. They conducted only a cursory inspection with the homeowner's permission, which yielded nothing. Brian claimed he had been living a normal life during those three days, visiting usual stores and tending to household chores. However, verifying his claims proved difficult. Whenever he left the house, he forgot his phone, which according to him 
was often taken without permission by his older children to play games. On January 5th, the police made a public appeal through television, displaying a photo of Anna and requesting anyone with information about her whereabouts or fate to immediately contact law enforcement. Yet, no witnesses came forward. The last time Anna was known to have made calls was to her mother and sister on December 31st, making her husband the last known person to have seen her. Surveillance camera footage from the neighborhood provided no leads. Anna was not captured on any cameras on the morning of January 1st, as if she had never left her home. On the contrary, her husband was recorded leaving and returning several times, but it was impossible to determine his destinations. Walsh's claim of a supermarket visit was debunked. His vehicle wasn't seen on any footage en route, nor was he spotted in the store. It wasn't until January 8th that Brian was arrested for providing false statements and taken in for questioning at the station, while his home was finally searched. It was discovered that on January 1st, he had gone to a hardware store in a different area, not on the list of approved locations he could visit under house arrest conditions. There, he spent nearly $500 on a significant quantity of cleaning supplies, plastic sheeting, duct tape, a mop with a bucket, and utility rags. He paid in cash, presumably hoping his visit would go unnoticed. Horrifying Discoveries in the Family Home During the search, at first glance, nothing out of the ordinary or suspicious was found in the home. Everything was in its place, with no signs of struggle or bloodstains detected. However, when law enforcement descended into the basement, there was no longer any doubt. This was the scene of a gruesome crime. There, smeared bloodstains were visible everywhere, and among the old clutter, a bloodied knife and saw wrapped in towels were hidden. Previously, Walsh had admitted that on January 3rd, he visited his mother's home, located on the other side of town. He claimed he had violated his house arrest conditions because his mother needed help with household tasks due to her deteriorating health. But after the grim discoveries in the basement, police suspected that on his way, the man could have disposed of evidence or parts of his deceased wife's body. All the trash bins in the area where the spouses lived, as well as along the route to his mother's house, were inspected. These searches yielded results, and in one of them, a kitchen hatchet with traces of dried blood and several blood-stained towels, similar to those found in the Walsh's basement, were discovered. Forensic analysis confirmed that the blood in the basement, on the towels, knife, hatchet, and saw, belonged to the missing Anna, dispelling any remaining doubts about her demise. Search history reveals chilling intent. Police seized a laptop belonging to Mr. Walsh, as well as a tablet owned by the couple's eldest son from the Walsh residence. The search history on these devices left investigators in disbelief. Weeks before his wife's disappearance, Brian was actively searching online for information about the most favorable states for divorce in terms of property division. He also sought information on whether he could lay claim to the second home in Washington, D.C., owned by Anna and registered solely in her name, thereby uncovering a possible motive for the crime. Regarding the tablet, the first query made around 4 in the morning on January 1st was, how long does it take for a body to start decomposing? This was followed by nearly two dozen searches on how to dispose of a body, how to clean up blood traces, how to dismember a body, whether a body could be identified if the teeth were removed, how long DNA traces last, and whether a person could be charged with a crime if the body was never found. All this information was searched on his young child's tablet, the child of the woman he mercilessly dealt with. By January 3rd, Brian was already searching how and when can someone inherit the property of a person who has disappeared. Clearly, he was confident he would evade punishment and was preparing to claim the inheritance. Charges and Trial On January 18th, Brian was formally charged with the murder of his wife, despite the fact that her body or any remains had not been found. Prosecutors believe that on the night of January 1st, 
Brian intentionally or accidentally took his wife's life and then decided to dispose of her body by dismembering it in the basement of their home. He then packaged the body parts in plastic and over the following days, discarded them in trash bins across different parts of the city. The area around the Walsh residence, as well as within a couple of kilometers, was thoroughly examined for evidence. Nearby wastelands, wooded areas, and bodies of water were also searched, but these efforts yielded no results. The defendant himself pleaded not guilty and refused to disclose what he had done with the body. Additionally, it was revealed that Anna had been feeling unhappy lately and had even considered divorcing her husband. She mentioned this several times during phone conversations with her mother and sister. The day before she disappeared, she called her mother, asking her to fly from Serbia for a few days. However, her mother apparently did not take her daughter's words seriously and decided to postpone her visit. The trial of Brian Walsh is ongoing. The accused is currently being held at the Norfolk Correctional Facility, awaiting his next court date. Anna's mother has been following the investigation from her home, as she has not traveled to the United States. The Serbian Ministry of Foreign Affairs has contacted the consulate in New York, which in turn has been in touch with the Norfolk District Attorney's Office to ensure that Anna's mother is timely informed about the investigation and hearings. As for the Walsh's three sons, they are now under state custody. None of Brian's family members wish to take care of them, citing Anna's mother's age and poor health, and her sister, who currently lives in Canada, also declined to take in her nephews. Only Anna's close friend, Pamela Barden, has expressed willingness to take the boys in, preferring that over them being separated and placed in different foster homes. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel. There are many shocking stories ahead of you.